Okay, so in this section we want to consider the geometry of simultaneous linear equations. So we should recall that when we are solving a pair of linear simultaneous equations in two variables, x and y, generally speaking, but obviously there can be other variables, um, we are finding the coordinates of the point where the two lines represented by those equations cross. So if we are simultaneously solving these two equations, we are looking for the x and y values that simultaneously make both those equations true. Graphically, that means we are finding the coordinates of the points where those two lines cross. Every single point on this blue line, the coordinates of those points fit this equation. That is, if I sub in the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate, the left-hand side will equal 18. Okay? Every single point on the red line fits this equation. That is, if I sub the x-coordinate in there and the y-coordinate in there, it'll, the left-hand side will be equal to 4. Okay, so what this point represents is if I sub x equals 3 and y equals negative 2, it makes that equation true. And also if I sub it in here, it makes that equation true. Because that would give us 6 minus 2, which does equal 4. This one would give us uh, 4, 3, so 12 plus 6 equal, does equal 18. Okay, so that is the one point on the whole Cartesian plane that makes both equations true. And so graphically, that represents the point where those two equations cross. So most commonly when we're solving two simultaneous linear equations with two variables, we're looking, we get a solution, an x value and a y value that graphically represents the coordinates of the point where those two lines cross. Obviously, there are also situations where things aren't so simple. It would be possible to have two parallel lines. So we could be given the equations like these. So it might not be immediately obvious from looking at the equations that they're parallel. So we get these two equations, but they're graphically, if we were to look at them, they're parallel lines, which means when we solve them simultaneously, there's actually not going to be a solution because they don't intersect. Similarly, we could have two equations which we don't immediately notice, but they're actually exactly the same equation. Okay. Uh, actually, that's an, there's a... Oh, no, I've got them the wrong way. Yeah, that's fine. thought there was a typo there for a minute, but there's not. They're actually exactly the same equation. It might not be immediately obvious given the format you've been given the two equations in okay and so actually they intersect infinitely many times so there's infinitely many solutions they intersect all the way along the line um, so let's have a look at what happens algebraically if we try to solve these different sets of equations so if we take these two equations here and to solve them simultaneously we might try and make these terms the same so we take equation one and we multiply it by three which gives us this equation here um, and now we have the same 3y term, but actually when we do that, we notice we also have the same 6x term. And so when we subtract the two equations to eliminate y, for example, we end up also eliminating x. And in fact, we then get this arbitrary statement that says that 0 equals 2, which is an impossible and completely meaningless statement. When we try to algebraically solve these two equations, okay, um, the first problem is, is that the x and y terms are not lined up, so let's sort that out, at least have the x and y's together. And then we notice if we double the first equation, we're actually going to have the same terms, and again, therefore, when we subtract them, we'll have 0, we'll eliminate both x and y. The difference here is that we'll also eliminate the right-hand side, and at least we get something that is true, 0 equals 0. At least its statement's true, but it's also equally meaningless. The slight difference is, is that this is sort of indicating to us that there actually aren't any solutions, whereas this is indicating to us that there is infinitely many solutions. Okay. Um, Alright, so a pair of simultaneous linear equations may have one, none, or infinitely many solutions. If the lines cross, there's one solution. If the lines are parallel, there's no solutions. If the lines are the same, there's infinitely many solutions. If you've established that the two equations do not have a unique solution, so that is they don't just cross at a particular point, then you must carefully consider the equations in order to determine whether you have parallel lines, and hence there's no solution, or whether you have the same line, in which case there will be infinitely many solutions. Parallel lines have the same gradient, but different y-intercept. Lines that are the same will have the same gradient and the same y-intercept. So we could rearrange the equations into the form y equals mx plus c, um, to be able to identify that, but actually that's an unnecessary step. Essentially, if the coefficients of x and y have been increased by the same proportion, 
Okay, so these were the parallel lines on the left hand side and these were the same lines on the right hand side. So here we can see that if we were to take the left hand side and multiply the left hand side of both equations, sorry, of the top equation by 3, we would get exactly the same um, coefficients. So what I mean by if we the coefficient of y, if we triple it, it's going to give us the same and if we triple that it gives us the same. So if those are in the same proportion, which they are here, tripling both of them will make the equations the same then that tells us the gradient's the same. Okay? If the right hand side is also times 3, then it is the same equation. But if it is times anything other than 3, so we don't even need to be able to work out what it is, as long as we know that that's not being multiplied by 3, that would mean the y-intercepts are going to be different. The y-intercepts aren't 4 and 10, Okay, let's be clear about that. But if this number is not being increased in the same scale factor as, if the right hand side isn't being increased in the scale, same scale factor as the left hand side, then the lines will be will not have the same y-intercept and so they won't be parallel. When they have infinitely many solutions, it's because the lines are exactly the same line. So you should be expecting to see that yes, the, if you take the whole left hand side and multiply it by a number, you'll get exactly the same left hand side in both equations. But then you should see if you multiply the right hand side by that same scale factor, you also get the same equation. Okay? So here, if we double the whole first equation, we get the second equation. And so therefore, they're the same line and they have infinitely many solutions. In the first example, if we triple the whole first equation, we don't get the whole second equation, but we do have the left hand side in the same proportion. So the gradients are the same, but the y-intercepts are different, so they're parallel. Okay, so example one, determine whether the following systems of simultaneous equations have a unique solution, no solutions, or infinitely many solutions. Okay, so let's have a think about this. So we've got 2x minus 2y, 3x minus 3y. I'm already seeing that that proportion is the same. If I were to divide by 2 and times by 3, so therefore multiply by 3 on 2, these are going to be the same. But this is not multiplying by 3 on 2. Not times 3 on 2. If you times that by 3, it's 9, and divide it by 2, it's 9 on 2, which is not 5, it's 4 and a half. Okay? So it doesn't really matter what the scale factor on the right here is, it's the fact that it's not the same as that. Okay? So therefore, this left-hand side tells us that we have the um, same gradient. Okay? This right-hand side tells us that we have different y-intercept. Okay? And so therefore, these lines are parallel lines, which means we get, um, sorry, no solutions. Okay. This pair of lines, let's have a look. So what do we got? x minus 5y, negative 2x plus 10y, seeing the same proportion there. Okay, so if I were to take that and multiply it by negative 2, I get that. Okay, so same gradient. If I were to take that and multiply it by negative 2, I also get same y-intercept. Same gradient and same y-intercept. So therefore, these are the same line which means we have infinitely many solutions. Example C, if we think about 3x minus 2y, 5x plus 3y, oop, equals 8 equals 2. Okay, we're not going to be able to multiply the whole left-hand side by a single um, value and get the whole right-hand side. That to that, that's um, we're going to need to divide by 3 and times by 5, so times by 5 thirds. That to that is divide by 2 and times by 3, so that's times by 3 on 2. And that to that, that's times by 4, sorry, times by a quarter. So none of those things are the same. The fact that the left-hand side hasn't been increased in the same proportion means gradient is different. Gradient is different. So immediately the fact that the gradient is different, they're going to intersect at one point. Okay? Um, doesn't really matter that they shouldn't have the same y-intercept. Well, they can have the same y-intercept. That one point could be um, 
So they can have different gradients. They could intersect on the y-axis, but the minute they've got different gradients, even if it's very, very slight, they're going to intersect somewhere. Okay. So the right-hand side is sort of irrelevant here the minute we work out that the gradient is different. So therefore, um, lines will intersect. Intersect at a point. At one point, which means that we're going to get one solution. All right, example two. The family of lines y equals mx minus three have varying gradient varying gradient m, but all pass through the point zero negative three, so they'll have the same y-intercept. Part A, for what value or values of m does the line y equals mx minus three not intersect the line y equals seven x plus one? Okay, it won't intersect. They, they don't have the same y-intercept, so that won't be an issue. So it won't intersect if they have the same gradient, because then they'll be parallel lines. Okay, so we'll get no point of intersection if lines are parallel, which means that will happen if m is also equal to 7. Part B, for what value or values of m does the line y equals mx minus 3 intersect the line y equals 7x plus 1? Okay, so they're going to intersect if they have different gradients, okay? Lines will intersect if gradients are different. Or they would also intersect if they have the same gradient and the same y-intercept, but we know definitively that they don't have the same y-intercept, okay? So this means as long as m is anything other than 7, they will intersect. If the line y equals mx minus 3 intersects the line y equals 7x plus 1 at the point 2, 8, find the value of m. Okay, so that is telling us, ah, oh, sorry, there's an error here. It shouldn't be 2, 8. It's my apologies, because actually this line doesn't go through 2, 8 um, when x equals 2, y equals 15. So sorry, can we correct that? Let's say they intersect at the point 2, 15. So we know this line goes through 2, 15. We need this line to also go through 2, 15. So when x equals 2, y equals 15, so that means 15 equals 2m minus 3, 18 equals 2m, m equals 9. And example 3, to finish off this section, this is quite a common question, although um, in year 12 when we do a little bit of work with matrices, we'll look at an alternative way to solve these kinds of questions, which would generally be the way I would do it, but this works as well. Consider the simultaneous linear equations, m minus 2x plus y equals 2, and mx plus 2y equals k. Find the values of m and k such that the system of equations has no solution, infinitely many solutions, a unique solution. Okay, so we need to be able to think about gradient and y-intercept. So let's get them both in the form y equals mx plus c. So I'm going to start with m minus 2x plus y equals 2. So y equals negative m minus 2x plus 2. Or we might choose, it's probably slightly needed to write that as 2 minus mx. Put the negative into that bracket, plus 2. Okay, so we can see gradient and y-intercept for that equation. And then for the other equation, um, it is mx plus 2y equals k. So 2y equals negative mx plus k. And so y is negative m on 2x plus k on 2. Okay, so we can see, oh, sorry, we can see gradients of the two um, equations and y-intercepts of the two equations. Okay, so let's think about what we need. So for no solutions, we need different gradient. different gradient, which means that 2 minus m cannot be equal to negative m on 2. Let's multiply everything by 2 to get rid of the fraction. 4 minus 2m cannot be equal to negative m. Let's add 2m. 4 cannot be equal to m. So m can't equal 4, okay? But we can have any y-intercept. 
as long as their gradients are different, they'll only intersect once. It doesn't matter where the y-intercept is. So that means that k could be anything. Um, uh, we haven't done any set notation properly yet. Um, so we would, we would say k could be any real number. k is an element of any real number. We'll talk more about that down the track. So therefore for part A, so we get no solution if m doesn't equal 4 and if k is any real number. So k could be anything. So you could probably not say anything about k. There'll be no solution if m doesn't equal 4. Doesn't matter what's happening with k. Okay. Now part b. We want infinitely many solutions, which means we want same gradient. So 2 minus m equals negative m on 2, which means we've already done the solving up there. m will equal 4. And we also want same y-intercept for infinitely many solutions. So we want 2, which is the y-intercept of the first line, to be equal to k on 2. So k has to equal 4. So therefore, infinitely many solutions if m equals 4 and k equals 4. Okay. And then part c, we need same gradient and different y-intercept for parallel lines, hence no solutions. Oh, sorry, it's a unique solution. Uh, sorry, I've mixed up. Um, this is the answer to part C. Sorry, so that's a unique solution if they've got different gradient. Sorry. So unique solution. If M it doesn't equal 4 and K it could be anything. Infinitely many solutions if M equals 4 and K equals 4. For no solution, we need same gradient and different y-intercept. We get same gradient, so therefore we're going to get, um, sorry, no solutions if same gradient happens when m equals 4. And if we want different y-intercept, we want k to be anything other than 4. Okay, so m, if m is equal to 4 and k doesn't equal 4, there'll be no solutions. If m equals 4 and k equals 4, there'll be infinitely many solutions. If m is anything other than 4, and therefore k can be anything, then they will have a unique solution. Sorry, I answered the questions in reverse. So this was part A, no solutions. Part B was infinitely many solutions. And this was part C, which was unique solution. Okay, so a mixture of questions from exercise 1C and exercise 2H.